All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Now we're gonna get everyone, I'm just trying to get them to shut the door. Wow, it's gonna be a long day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Always feels already feels long. Okay, I think we're I think we're we're good to start because we uh, want to finish on time. Um, what I would like to do is just introduce myself and my co-panelists, and then we're going to have a bit of a discussion around a number of key topics today, predominantly around you know NFV and how that's getting deployed and and different perspectives from operators who are actually working very hard to uh, uh, drive that forward. Um, so, without any ado, I, my name is Daryl Jordan Smith. I work for Red Hat. I lead the ITC vertical at Red Hat. Um, uh, I'm actually based in California, as you can probably tell from my accent if you're from the US. And, uh, and if not, um, no. I'm originally from the UK. But, yeah. but um, I want to take the time to, to, to hand over to, to, to my panelists to maybe introduce themselves a little bit. Um, uh, but what I'll do is I'll just run left to right and, and let you know who, who's, who's, who's up here with me uh, today. So to my left, uh, we have Ray from, from uh, China Mobile Research Institute. Um, next to Ray, we have uh, Michael, who uh, is fr from TELUS. And next to Michael, we have Fred. We're going first names today, because I'm not very good at second names, uh, from, from Verizon. Um, three you know, major operators in this field. Um, we're all very excited to, to have them here. Um, let me hand over to Ray just to maybe introduce himself a little bit more further and his responsibilities at China Mobile, and, and then we'll go with uh, Michael and Fred. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Ray from China Mobile Research Institute. Uh, I'm the project manager and the senior researcher of uh, big data and IT department. Uh, currently, I'm responsible for the NLV IT infrastructure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Michael Bagg, and I am at uh, TELUS Communications, which is a Canadian uh, telecommunications company. Uh, we have a nationwide presence in Canada, as well as some locations uh, globally. Uh, my role is a cloud architect in the cloud and infrastructure architecture group at TELUS. Um, and that's it. <laughs> uh, I'm Fred Oliveira. I'm from uh, Verizon, which is uh, both wireless and wireline uh, uh, environments. Uh, and I've been also working uh, on cloud architect at uh, Verizon, and we're working on uh, architecting the uh, uh, OpenStack platform for Verizon for NFE. Great. Thank you very much. So without further ado, what I want to try and do is start <laughs> off the panel by, you know, my first question. And we were doing a bit of a review this morning over breakfast, and we decided the first question would probably take the entire session. Um, so hopefully it won't be as bad as that, but we're, we're, we're going to go into hopefully some, some, some level of detail. Uh, I really wanted to ask the panelists one by one to just talk about why they're here today um, and uh, you know, wh where they are with their OpenStack uh, implementations and NFE in general. Um, and then specifically, you know, where they see some of the immediate issues in terms of uh, some of their deployments. There's a, a various questions within that. There's a lot of, to talk about and cover there, but it would be a good baseline for uh, uh, the conversation here at the panel today. So, Ray, I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, China Mobile has always been a supporter and a promoter of new technologies. Uh, we are continuously protecting uh, new technologies to promote our network and uh, business even ocean. And uh, uh, for the uh, uh, now CT and IT are deeply converged, uh, in which uh, NLV and OpenStack are uh, deeply involved. Uh, for, for us, uh, China Mobile, we have two uh, driving forces. Uh, the first one is uh, we want to shorten the time to market of telecom services. And the second one is um, uh, we want to reduce the company TCO, especially the uh, operating cost, the CapEx. And we hope uh, NFV and uh, OpenStack, these new technologies can help us to push and to make it happen. Uh, and for challenges, uh, we have many challenges when uh, introducing the new technology. Uh, first, by introducing 4G, uh, China Mobile got the uh, accelerated growth of uh, our 4G traffic. Uh, 
the traditional uh, network architecture and operating system uh, can hardly adapt to this uh, rapid traffic growth. Uh, so we need to embrace new technologies to help us to solve these problems. And second challenge is uh, the software and hardware or traditional telecom equipment are binding. Uh, it, uh, when we upgrade the network, it's um, make it inefficiently. And um, the operation and maintenance make it very difficult. Uh, so we have to reform the network architecture and uh, the whole network management uh, operation mechanism. And for management, uh, uh, it's more complicated because we have a legacy OSS and BSS system. Uh, we also have um, uh, the management platform for different uh, cloud platform. Uh, for example, we have a private cloud and public cloud. All the management systems are different. By introducing NLV uh, manual, uh, it is becoming more and more complicated. So we have to uh, make the specification standard uh, of the manual and to integrate all this management platform and uh, to uh, uh, make it with uh, new technologies with the uh, open stack. And uh, with the uh, development of IT and internet technology, uh, it brings uh, huge challenges to operators. Um, on the other hand, uh, it brings us uh, also development opportunities. Uh, we hope to uh, grab this uh, opportunity and use this uh, we open stack these new technologies to uh, face these challenges and to solve the problems. Okay. Great, thank you, Ray. I'll come back to some of the things that you were talking about yes, in a minute. Yes, yes. Uh, Michael. Um, th th my, my answer is uh, very similar to what uh, a colleague here is, has to say. There's not much more that I can add, um, except that for TELUS, uh, a number of the drivers that we have for what our introduction to NFP and SDN are all requiring of a cloud delivery mechanism. So when we talk about business drivers and our initiatives around providing um, health connectivity and services to the healthcare industry, uh, the connectivity and service that we need to offer to uh, Internet of Things, particularly in the automotive and retail sectors, are very much going to require the uh, kinds of latency that can only be delivered by um, the NFE and SDN micro cloud deliveries that we're going to have in our POPs and our COs and our MSOs. And so as we begin to um, augment our legacy networks and our um, distributed uh, services to achieve that uh, unified control plane, we will begin to have those uh, footprints of cloud to deliver those sort of business services that are growing. So our, our play is uh, somewhat coupled to the private cloud evolution. So um, as we deploy and build our initial NFV pods that we put into these sort of locations, we will likely be binding them to um, a private cloud delivery. Uh, yeah, so I, again, I agree with uh, pretty much everything else that you guys have said. Uh, from uh, Verizon's perspective, our uh, biggest problem is that we uh, are, and, and advantage that our uh, data growth is growing at a very high rate. Uh, and unfortunately, our um, uh, costs to run the environment are growing at a higher rate than the, uh, the revenue we're getting from that data. Uh, and we, so we need uh, a, a way to somehow break that curve and modify the curve. Uh, and we see uh, OpenStack and NFV as a potential solution to uh, modify that curve uh, and bring us back more in line with the, uh, where the cost structure is more in line with the uh, revenue we're getting for that delivery. Uh, some of the uh, challenges we see, I think I agree with very similar things. Uh, we have a very, lots of legacy systems, uh, uh, lots of uh, integration with different uh, management systems, OSS environments, BSS environments. Uh, how do we connect the existing environments that uh, we have uh, into new uh, NFV enabled uh, OpenStack clouds that we can uh, 
uh, integrate all those uh, services together. Great. So I'll, I'll start with you, Fred, because I don't want to get you to be the last person down the road every <laughs> yes. single time. Sure. But you, you, you just touched on some of the challenges that you were seeing mm -hmm. in terms of integrating some of those legacy systems. How are how you un uncovering those challenges internally in Verizon from an operational standpoint? I, yeah, so I, I think we certainly have a, a, a dedicated team that uh, is very familiar with our internal services and it's uh, slowly uh, uh, working through all the challenges they see uh, developing custom build adapters to the uh, existing environments, uh, services and uh, infrastructure and, and um, uh, feedback that uh, OpenStack can provide and uh, adapting those to the services we have. Uh, uh, we're, it, it's a slow transition. Uh, I think we're in the midst of uh, getting ready to deploy our first service and it'll be an interesting challenge. Great, Michael? Uh, so uh, I think that we have a, a couple different approaches happening at Telus right now. There is, uh, in the group that I'm in, we are, uh, for the large part, approaching a greenfield approach where we're trying to land a, um, a componentized uh, service that is completely green to the legacy environments that we're in. Um, that being said, uh, there will have to be s uh, some eventual integration as we move forward, but. Um, if we wait until we have that integration well uh, working, we'll very likely never be able to move forward with mm -hmm. some of the uh, opportunities that exist. So um, as we begin to deploy our initial uh, NFE pods, uh, we're going to be very careful and deliberate with what kinds of services we begin to integrate into that uh, environment. Um, you know, and I think that some of the, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to aim for some of the low hanging fruit that exists there. Um, as you know, we mentioned earlier, the idea of uh, what it's gonna take to sort of upgrade and reform the legacy environment. Um, a lot of it uh, comes from the, the mere fact that some of our 15 and 20 year old pieces of hardware are no longer delivered as a hardware platform. They're delivered as a virtual machine. So when you receive this virtual machine, how are they going to live in an environment where there's, there does not exist uh, the kind of infrastructure that's able to provide a virtualized stack. I mean, one idea would just be to merely land some machines, tie together a vCenter or uh, some sort of ESXi mm -hmm. cluster and load that VM on it, but that itself does not lend itself to any kind of uh, centralized management or um, to all of the features of NFE and SDN that we want to explore and exploit. So, Cloud. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ray, from your perspective, you were talking a little bit about the challenges around uh, management of this very complex environment. Okay. You know, can you expand a little bit more about what you're seeing in those that, that area and what some of the challenges are that you're seeing? Uh, from a China Mobile point of view, uh, because we have large uh, management system, uh, we have different uh, management platform, legacy platforms. Uh, we are from the research department. We are pushing all these uh, new technologies, uh, the OVNV and OpenStack. Uh, we are carefully, carefully defining the specifications and uh, standards. And we also, we, are, we have many uh, uh, POC and the test activities and field trials uh, to verify the technical solutions are ready uh, for us to move forward. Uh, but uh, as a new technology, we, we, we have uh, we faced um, uh, pushback from uh, traditional departments, especially from the uh, uh, operation and maintenance department. Uh, it, is, uh, it is normal because uh, new technology introduces uh, many difficulties and challenges. Uh, the NV, uh have to reform the, all the whole network uh, management systems, uh, and so we are carefully uh, defining the specifications and uh, uh, by testing to verify the, the technical solutions. So, Michael, what would your perspective be on that? So the uh, one thing that we're kind of missing a little bit here is the risk. Uh, I think a lot of the pushback that we're going to uh, encounter comes from um, a very risk adverse uh, set of uh, mm -hmm. operational uh, groups. Uh, but the point is, is uh, as we mentioned that the, the curve uh, can no longer, the, the demand, right. The, right. The, the demand. The cost curve is too hard. The, the, mm -hmm. the curve is too hard to manage. Yeah. You know, at, at once upon a time, you'd be able to buy a, a piece of gear that you can expect to last for 10 years and hire a group of people that can also last for 10 years. 
But with the, we're now at the end of the curve where that's no longer possible. As you begin to add devices, as you begin to add people, um, it's, a, uh, it's an exponential uh, problem. No, I think there's uh, certainly that they can both from a uh, kind of a, somehow to change our legacy management style as well as add automation into this environment as well. Uh, I think those are kind of the two things we see in this uh, way to break this cost curve is to uh, automate a lot of the current processes that are done manually today, uh, enable some of the uh, uh, automatic functionality of scaling products, uh, and that's, again, the kind of the NFE enables uh, some of that uh, scaling uh, of functionality and, and performance as you need it. So do you see much pushback from the, the, the risk-averse part of network operations in, in your businesses? How's that, how are you working through some of those challenges? Uh, Fred. Well, I, yeah, yes, we are. Uh, <laughs> uh, as, as everybody is, uh, I think, obviously going to face, we're, uh, again, I, I think, as Michael was saying, uh, we're, we're not going to kind of t take on the major load of the environment uh, right away. We're going to have a slow ramp of uh, bringing in and proving that the uh, uh, services can uh, perform at a uh, reliability and performance as kind of our current environment, and that our operations team can actually uh, run that environment uh, as well, if not better, than uh, they can their current environment. Uh, we, the, it's kind of interesting that uh, our operations team actually is excited about moving this direction. Uh, and they see that this, they have to do something. They can't keep uh, building uh, kind of custom solutions for all this uh, and are looking forward to enabling uh, agility, um, enabling different kind of ways to provide services. Great, Michael? No, uh, the, it's a new environment, it's a new world for a lot of the network engineering teams that we have. Uh, mixing in this idea of doing automation and building scripts and templating and uh, providing uh, central control to many of the environments is, is just not how things have been done. So this is a, a new uh, education uh, process for many of those environments. Right. Now, Ray, just like building on, on some of the things that the colleagues were saying here, um, you know, the, we're embarking on this journey using open source. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, there, there are probably some interesting nuances with regards to network operations, people using open source uh, mm -hmm. technology, but you know, from a China mobile perspective, yeah. you know, how do you see open source? You know, what role does it play in your thinking in terms of driving that cost curve and the agility that you're looking forward to and, and the innovation that it potentially brings to? Well, uh, open source is a trend of the IT industry and the China Mobile will follow this trend. Uh, but we also saw uh, open source now has a gap with the with, uh, operator's requirements. So uh, uh, previously, we also uh, tried to deploy the open source uh, software in our current systems. Uh, for example, uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux in our private cloud. And also, we deployed the uh, RHEL OSP as a management platform for our uh, hybrid cloud. Yeah, and now for NFV, uh, we still we have to be very careful because uh, uh, for NFV, we need the carry grid. Uh, so uh, we will <coughs> uh, do the test verification very carefully. And uh, we uh, raise our requirement specifications for this. And uh, we will de develop the uh, requirements. What is currently not uh, supported by OpenStack, we develop it by uh, our server partners and to support our carrier grade requirements. Great, uh, Michael. From your perspective, uh, you know I've had a number of discussions around what exactly is carrier grade. Um, but let's not uh, belabor the point of whether a carrier grade is any. Mm -hmm great deal different from what a well-run network requires. The uh, gaps that we talk about are often around the um, dependencies of all of the multiple kinds of protocols and um, vendor pieces of the pie that live within that environment. And how much lag can we um, uh, live through with each iteration or growth of, of an OpenStack uh, release. So for instance, um, 
there may be some network or switching tools that have a four-month lag from when Liberty is released to when we can actually deploy and use Liberty. Um, and that's just one vendor, a switching vendor. Now, what happens when you start laboring, when you start building into um, into that, uh, the other kinds of uh, releases of different kinds of protocols um, as you begin to mix in uh, IPv6 and mm -hmm. where that kind of lives in the network. And mm -hmm. I, I see that the, the gap from um, open source is pretty broad there. Mm -hmm. Right, from your perspective? No, I, well, I think the uh, open source brings one of the big advantages is the, uh, the ability to innovate rapidly, uh, bring new technologies, new techniques into the uh, environment rapidly. Uh, but along with that, uh, again, I think you get the, the um, it's not completely uh, thought through in certain circumstances and uh, also hasn't been completely tested and validated in all the environments we want. I think one of the, again, gaps from uh, the existing environment is, and this is kind of where the kind of the carrier grade model comes in, is be able to uh, qualify, validate, uh, that all the services are capable of uh, tolerating the uh, rapid growth, the event issues that we get, uh, failure modes that we see, uh, that the environment can actually handle all that uh, at the rate we need it to handle it and at the uh, kind of low overall failure rate that uh, we require in the network. So do you, do you Ray, coming back to, you know, you made, made a very good point about the carrier greatness of say OpenStack and the additional features that need to be built in that. Do you think that's an inhibitor to the adoption of NFE? Or do you think that because of open source we can reach and meet those gaps uh, collaboratively together? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, as I already mentioned, open source is a trend. Uh, open source has many advantages because it has an uh, open interface, uh, the open mechanism of security and uh, the management uh, mechanism. So we will uh, go along this uh, road and uh, uh, we will uh, uh, define the requirements and uh, we uh, deploy the open, uh, open stack, open source uh, technique step by step from easy to hard. Right. Michael, from you. Uh, precisely. Um, as I mentioned before, we're approaching it from a greenfield approach, landing greenfield environments that we could begin to uh, integrate uh, as much as we can, as we can. Um, there will be some other efforts by other groups in our company to, um, to, to better integrate into our legacy environments. But I think in those cases, it may be using OpenStack as the mechanism to help orchestrate some legacy environments. I, I, I ha I'm hesitant to think that that's going to be too very successful, but we will try. Great. So, um, Fred, from your perspective, are you, are you seeing in, in the deployment, you know, any low-hanging fruits in, in Verizon in terms of, you know, use case examples that you, you can share? Uh, I think there, well, there's lots of use cases that are potential to uh, share where uh, a lot of the issues that uh, we're facing are basically uh, uh, short-term expansion of the environment. And so we're looking to, uh, for certain circumstances, things like uh, uh, some video service as a video uh, becomes uh, hot in the environment that uh, we don't have all the uh, videos distributed across all the environment that we can scale up. A, uh, an environment to share those videos uh, at real time uh, as we go. Um, other areas that we're looking at are uh, specifically for being more um, nimble in terms of uh, deploying uh, uh, services, new services or existing services more rapidly. Uh, and there we're looking uh, at uh, a enterprise mobile services. Um, and there's a, a lot of uh, capability for providing um, extended services for enterprises in, in uh, an OpenStack world. Right. Michael, from, tell us what are, what are, what are uh, some of the use cases you're, you're looking to change? You know, we, we, we talk about uh, there being low-hanging fruit, but in, 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 our, in my experience so far is that a lot of it is uh, having to just eat the elephant. You know, there, you know, we try to differentiate what are going to be some of the easier approaches that we can do. Um, and we find that it's just as we may as well go after some of the harder ones. But the cases where, 
we are beginning to begin to play is just looking at um, defining our, our control plane, the kind of uh, contr control plane activities we can to begin to automate some of the services. Like that's our focus right now. And as we begin to mature, we'll begin to look at uh, some of the use cases that abound. Mm -hmm. But until we get our controlling, our ability to uh, do the management and configuration of some of these services, we're, we're not moving too much forward. Uh, Ray, from your perspective? Uh, actually, China Mobile has already deployed uh, LV in many areas. Uh, first, we already deployed uh, LV in our RCS system. It's, uh, RCS is a rich communication suit, which is more like a service platform, but with uh, the carrier grid uh, requirements. And then we did the lab test for uh, control plane you just mentioned control plane, virtual IMS in our lab, and also uh, push the, uh, the tr field trial in some uh, province of China Mobile. And then now we are doing the lab test for uh, virtual EPC in the lab. And uh, we also have a project called CRAN, which is focused on the uh, wireless, uh, and we, uh, which is a uh, migrate traditional base station uh, to the general IT platform. It is also in the research and the lab test period. Uh, so again, we are doing this uh, uh, step by step from uh, uh, easy to hard, from control plane and then data plane, and finally the wireless radio access mm -hmm. network. And finally, we will achieve the goal of the uh, whole system based on the IT platform. Right. So, so, I mean, from my perspective, you know, just listening into what you were you were saying, um, and summarizing it a little bit, there there seems to be some specific progress. Um, there seems to be uh, some gaps in and around OpenStack that you were addressing from an R and D perspective, and we're trying to address those in the upstream community uh, mm -hmm. collectively. Uh, but those gaps do exist, and we're having to pick yeah. the right use cases. Mm -hmm. um, but from your perspective, Ray, you know, where, do, you, do you think that some of the technical issues, you mentioned Cloud RAN and jitter and latency and all these big issues from a carrier grade perspective are pretty yeah. major. Yeah. Um, how, how are you seeing that in the lab? Are you, are you seeing that that's something that's going to be realistically deployed in say the next 12 to 18 months? Uh, for wireless, uh, maybe it is difficult because we uh, previously, I was in charge of a CRAN project and uh, we did a lot of tests in our lab. Uh, uh, for wireless, uh, we have to meet the 3GPP specification, which has uh, uh, extreme real-time performance mm. requirements. Uh, so we have to do many uh, uh, improvement uh, from the open, uh, open source technique. Uh, for example, we have to uh, use real-time virtualization, uh, but to uh, leave the wireless, uh, we just talk about uh, uh, the core network, it, it is uh, easier to realize. Uh, we just did a lab test for the decoupling test of NFEI and the VNF. Uh, previously, we have uh, some tests, uh, uh, but with the coupled system, mm -hmm. uh, which means uh, a traditional telecom equipment provider. They provide uh, both the uh, WNF software and also the IT platform. But this time we did the test with the decoupled from different companies. And we, f we did find some gaps. Uh, for example, uh, the OpenStack, uh, now we, uh, we need the resource management uh, for both physical resources and also virtualized uh, resources. But the OpenStack now uh, only support uh, virtualized uh, resource management. Mm. So we have to uh, enhance the management of physical resources. Mm. Uh, and uh, another point is uh, uh, we found the OpenStack at this, uh, this stage is still very new. Uh, the, the easy to use and the uh, stability still need to be improved. This is what we found mm -hmm. through our test. Great, thank you. Yeah.
And Michael, do you want to add anything from your perspective on this? Um, only that uh, we, you know, currently we have a number of vendor-supported proof of concept environments, and it's very difficult for us to uh, find some common thread of uh, stability across all of those POC mm -hmm. environments. Um, we may find some, uh, you know, the pros and cons of working with some. Uh, Cisco ACI, for instance, or going with another vendor or some other vendors that we're, that we're looking at. Um, and of course, the monitoring utilities that we have available to us and the testing utilities. Um, there's a mixed uh, bag of what exists there that, that still needs to be flushed out. So I'm going to change the question up just a little bit for you, Fred. No. Um, if you were to, to look at the vendors, because Michael made a very good point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there's a number of probably vendors in the room, um, I'm uh, sure. Um, what, what, what are the key messages that Verizon, because I think you, you are actually hope, hosting this week NFV 12. Mm -hmm. um, what, are the, what are the key messages you're giving the vendors you know, to, to, to come to you with, with, with things that can be you know, deployed or implemented? What are, what, what, can you well, give us a hint on, on what yeah. you see there? So we're, 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 again, we're encouraging uh, all of our vendors to provide NFV solutions for virtualized network functions. Uh, and to be uh, independent, and I think this is good, some of your topics, of uh, independent of the, uh, between the virtualization environment and the hardware they're running on, uh, they really need to be uh, in a mode that we can uh, have a different hardware vendor, a different uh, uh, OpenStack vendor, and a different VNF vendor. Uh, and I think there's today not a, enough standardization in the environment to make that work cleanly. Uh, and so I think we're trying to identify what the gaps are today, uh, go through the various standard organizations to make all that work. Uh, and again, we're asking all of our vendors to support us and uh, provide understanding about what the gaps are, uh, how they can modify either their applications or their infrastructure or the hardware uh, to make some of that uh, environment work better. What's the joke? If one standard is good, 20, uh, 20 of them will hear <laughs> <laughs> So, so, Ray, from your perspective, you know, what are you asking the key vendors in China for, for, for your business? Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, the, the same, we are encouraging all the industry partners uh, to cooperate with us, uh, uh, including the traditional uh, telco providers, also the IT partners, uh, because now we uh, is a new concept. It includes the IT platform and also the traditional uh, telecom software. So we have to combine all the resources to make the NFV uh, to into reality because it's a huge challenge. Mm. Now, one, one of the things that we, we see from a Red Hat perspective, and I'll uh, convert to a question, is the traditional vendors, you know, the, the, the network equipment providers like the Cisco's, the Alcatel, Lucent's, the Nokia's, and so on and so forth. Um, they're having to adapt their business model away from providing traditional appliances and becoming more like systems integrators, mm -hmm. which begs the question, do you see incumbent integrators coming into this space, providing you the best of breed solution and, and, and actually working with you to, to do that? Or do you think that's a, a bit too much of a risk in terms of their understanding of the network? So I'll, I'll ask uh, Ray first. Uh, it is very difficult question. <laughs> uh, Actually, we now we uh, current stage we can't say which is uh, better, uh, the traditional telco providers or the IT uh, platform <laughs> providers. So we are doing the test to uh, by different method. Uh, we are encouraging encouraging uh, both the traditional providers and also IT providers uh, to uh, they can they can both be the the integrator and we can. We will see the, the result of which way is, is better, is more suitable for us. So it's a, it's a, it's a learning exercise as this business is transitioning. Yeah, yeah Michael, from your, from your perspective, what do you see it tell us? I'm expecting that our vendors had better well provide um, open standard compliant hardware and devices. I want to see switches that support OpenFlow, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, I want the option to be able to use the vendor hardware however I see fit. Um, rather than being locked down to a proprietary use case. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I certainly agree with all those things. And I think one of the uh, challenges that this whole environment brings is that, uh, from Verizon's perspective, is I think we need to take on some more of that integration uh, 
role ourselves uh, because we don't necessarily have uh, any single integrator that has all the knowledge about our network as well as you know, what the applications that run on it. Uh, you know, we don't have the right solution yet. I think we're, we're still exploring what the right uh, uh, combination of vendors is and who the integrator is. Uh, I think internally we're uh, currently being the system integrator ourselves. This is all part of the uh, upgrade and reform that yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Dre, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah. Uh, we are also uh, trying to uh, to develop the the, the, the specifications, uh, the all the requirements, also by my by ourselves, uh, based on OpenStack, and to see the op uh, possibility uh, of. Uh, China Mobile as an integrator hmm. ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So one, one of the things, we talked about big vendors. Um, and uh, one of the things that we see in the marketplace is a lot of small ones mm -hmm. that are, are bringing very innovative solutions. So sort of the, the, with the theory that innovation sits elsewhere. And, and some of these guys are, are, are positioning themselves to work with China Mobile or TELUS or Verizon. Um, and it's very difficult to engage because you're very large, complex businesses in your own right. Any advice for those vendors who may be in the room? It's a kind of a, a difficult question as well. You know, a smaller company, how do they engage? And you know, should they work through a bigger vendor? What, what would your, your advice be at the top of your head? Uh, I'm going to ask Fred. He's, I know he's racing to think of a good answer for that one. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not sure I have a great advice. Uh, certainly, I, I think the, uh, and I think you're right, the, uh, you know, Verizon is a uh, huge uh, task, and, and if you're kind of a small vendor and not prepared for the uh, kind of the challenges of dealing with a large vendor like Verizon, you know, you're probably gonna, not going to be providing us with the uh, the services we need. Uh, but uh, I I also think uh, from Verizon's perspective that uh, a lot of small vendors uh, provide innovation. Uh, uh, and as well as uh, motivation for some of our existing vendors to modify their behavior uh, and innovate along with them. Uh, and so I think there's both a, uh, a direct usage uh, perspective from innovation of small vendors within Verizon as well as uh, hope that the, uh, some of that innovation feeds back into the uh, larger vendors. Great. And Michael, you, what do you see at Telus? You see um, we vendors? speak to a number of gaps that exist. I think that the small vendors uh, may be able to provide some solution that uh, you know may evolve from being a short-term solution that uh, covers some gap that exists and to being part of a larger solution if they're able to close that gap. To address some of the challenges we were talking about in terms of carrier mm -hmm. grade. And, and, and Ray, from, from your perspective, you, you, how, how does a small vendor engage with China Mobile? Uh, actually, by introducing NFV, uh, the, uh, the WinF software and IT platform are decoupled to which uh, lower the gate of the small companies. And we already have some very small company which just develop uh, WinF software mm -hmm. and already contest the, for the future test. And uh, for the IT platform, uh, it's still uh, make it easier because there are lots of internet companies they can develop uh, the, the OpenStack platform uh, just uh, based on our specification, meet our requirement, and then they can join. So we are encouraging all the companies, partners, not only the big ones, but also the small ones, new ones. That's yeah. great. Well, I think we, we're actually, are we, we're running out of time. We've got one minute, but, um, but what I would like to do is to thank my panelists mm -hmm. you know, for their time. We, we covered a lot of ground. Um, uh, with you know three very distinguished individuals from very major uh, uh, carriers around the world, um, and I hope that we gave you some good insights in terms of some of the things that are, are top of mind and top of the agenda. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Ray, Michael, and Fred for for spending the time mm -hmm. and and sharing some of their experiences, uh, good, bad, and ugly, uh, as it may well seem. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I'd like to. Uh, Thank them, and uh, and I think we can close the session because I think it's how many minutes we got. But but feel well, free to reach out to me yeah. with any questions. I, I know that I think you can reach me through the, uh, yeah. the names that we have uh, posted, and I'll be glad to answer as much as I can any questions you have. Great, thank you, Michael. Same, same for me. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah.